So back at Computex, when Intel did that weird demo on stage where they had this like, this like chilled liquid cooled 28 core overclocked processor, I don't think anyone could figure out what exactly it was they were trying to accomplish. Even Intel themselves didn't seem to know what was going on because that same CPU, although not cooled by chilled liquid, was actually on display the next day with their board partners like ASUS, only to be quickly yanked away and then we haven't heard anything about it since then, except for a leaked roadmap that seems to suggest that Intel is planning what appears to be a knee-jerk reaction to AMD's 32-core Threadripper 2. A 28-core based on, as far as we can tell, a similar platform to their existing Xeon Platinum. Now, I don't know what segment they're gonna target with this. A workstation, enthusiast, people with more money than brains, but whatever it is, I realized something. We actually have in our hands both the 32-core Threadripper 2 and Intel Xeon Platinum 8180, which, rumor has it, will be very similar to the upcoming Enthusiast chip, albeit without overclocking. So today, we are gonna put them head-to-head -head as a preview of the ultimate heavyweight showdown of CPUs we're not sure who is going to buy. And the whole thing is brought to you by Videoblocks. Videoblocks is a great subscription-based resource for downloading stock footage, video, and more. Check it out at the link in the video description. So while Ivan puts the finishing touch on our LGA 3647 bench over there, I'm going to walk you through what are otherwise as identical as we can get them test rigs. So in here, we've got a Threadripper 32 core. We've got a Noctua 120 millimeter tower cooler. We've got a Zenith Extreme motherboard with what I believe is 32 gigs of RAM. 32 gigs, right? Yeah, it should be. And then we've got a GTX 1080. Uh, Samsung 840 Pro SSD and an RM850i power supply. Now, bear in mind that any results that we show you guys for this guy have to be taken with a significant grain of salt because Intel will have at least, I think, a couple of months to tune the consumer version of this before you would ever be able to buy one. Not that most people would ever be able to buy one. Like, this is 10 grand. So we don't know how much or how little they're planning to slash the price compared to the Pro one, but like, it ain't gonna be cheap. So this guy right here has got a uh, same power supply, same cooler, sort of, except it's like a modified version that works with LGA 3647. Thank you Noctua for sending that over. We've got them both hooked up to power meters and then it's running an ASUS Z11PAU12. It's got the same GeForce GTX 1080 Founders Edition and then it is of course running a Xeon Platinum 8180. Now, the RAM, this is something that could affect our results, but we had to use what's compatible with our CPU. So this is DDR4-2666 ECC memory, the same stuff from our six workstations, one CPU project. Hey, it's done. Here we go. Is this broken? This CPU, what, 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 what? Okay, adding another boulder sized grain of salt to this whole experience is that this latest BIOS we just flashed no longer supports the 8180 CPU. Probably if I had to guess because of its massive 205 watt TDP. So we're gonna have to go back in time to another BIOS in order to run our comparison. <laughs> And four hours later, we finally have the solution. You know what? Screw it. We're just gonna run our... <laughs> We're just gonna run the light of a thousand suns directly into Ivan's eyes. Burning into my soul. Sorry about that. Anyway, we're, none of the BIOSes we tried worked and we downloaded like one of the earliest ones that should have been the same as what we had and it was corrupt right off ASUS, whatever, it doesn't matter. Point is, we're just using our dual socket board with a single CPU where the only real consideration performance wise is we have to make sure we use a PCI Express slot that is connected to that socket. So everything's hunky dory. This is effectively the same apples-ish to apples-ish comparison and 
we are ready to go. So naturally, I'm sure the first thing you guys are gonna wanna see after the task manager porn, 56 threads on this one, 64 threads on this one, is probably gonna be Cinebench, right? It's gotta be Cinebench. Boom! Who will finish first? Wow, those are both super fast, but one of them looks a little faster. One of them looks a fair bit faster. Whoa! AMD is a good 20% ahead, which makes sense because even though Threadripper 2's performance per clock is lower than Intel's Skylake architecture, they do have a core advantage. So they have four more cores and watch this. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna run the test again and we're gonna have a look at what our clock speeds are while they're going. So you can see here, AMD is turboing up higher when you're hitting all the cores compared to Intel. So round one goes to the Threadripper 2990WX. Test number two, the V-Ray benchmark from Chaos Group. So we're running the CPU benchmark here. Here we go, our AMD processor is pinned, our Intel processor is pinned. AMD is looking pretty good here too, wow. And done. Okay, no matter which one of these things you buy, you're gonna be like going super fast. And three seconds doesn't seem like a lot of difference, but three seconds out of 30 is 10% faster for Threadripper 2. This is great. Tell us more about your gear. Are you overclocking liquid cooling or anything else ingenious for getting a performance boost? Does, does it show that every time? Or is it just when you're like bananas? I don't think I've seen Hey Anthony, before. you ever seen this in the V-Ray benchmark? It did it on both of these. I wonder if there's some kind of a threshold. Clearly that's a tailored message. Yeah. No, we're not doing anything ingenious, just spending lots of money. So for our blender test, we're going to be rendering the classroom scene. And this one will probably actually take a couple minutes. So we'll come back in just a moment here. Man, that's a lot of cores. It's beautiful. You can even just feel the heat coming off these things. This does seem like a good opportunity to remind you guys though, that this is not the actual product. This is just the closest thing that we have to it now. This is cool though, compared to that burn test we were running before, it's turboing much higher in real world applications, even though the usage is 100%. So it looks like they might be detecting stress testing applications and throttling down. Anyway, so that's interesting to know. In terms of power consumption, this is one area where Intel's looking a little bit better. Our Threadripper 2 machine is pulling 380 watts from the wall, remember. This is before we've even touched the GPU, and this is with no overclocking on either of them, because our Xeon won't overclock, whereas we don't know what Intel's planning to do with the real chip that's coming. And then Intel's pulling about 265 watts. It's crazy, they both feel like space heaters, you know? <laughs> with, the, with the fans, even with these fans running at full speed, and these are nice fans. Oh boy, this is not looking amazing for Intel right now. Threadripper 2 already chewed through the first segment of the test and I think it's done. Wow. For just under five minutes for classroom. Whereas Intel, we're at 515 and it hasn't even finished the initial render. 545. I don't think I ever thought I would see it again. AMD's top of the line versus Intel's top of the line. And it just being a, a blowout. So that concludes the productivity segment of our testing. And now we're gonna do what neither Intel, whoop, Intel nor AMD is gonna be particularly stoked on. We're gonna fire up some games. So starting with CSGO. Well, if CSGO is anything to go by, Intel looks like they're gonna have a bit better of a time when it comes to gaming. With that said, CSGO is known to heavily favor Intel's current chips versus AMD's uh, Zen-based chips. Oh boy, average frame rate, 310.21. 
versus 297.85. That doesn't seem right. Because in This game, was so much higher. Hex? I, I have an alibi. Yeah, I don't know what just happened there. There's like, there's no way. Okay, well take those results with even more salt than the rest of this video because there's no way that's right. That doesn't make any sense. All right, our test is done. We can go ahead and quit the game. Okay, so these are more like the numbers we were expecting to see in CSGO. Though. That brings us to our final game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. How to benchmark on the same account with two PCs at once. You gotta do the ethernet cable shuffle. It goes like this. Ah, play game. Here we go. Now this is closer. This is really close. With all these character models, Intel is actually enjoying a pretty significant advantage. Behold. Average FPS 100, average FPS 87, so a significant advantage, but it should be noted that a gaming advantage from one of these CPUs to the other is not particularly meaningful. If you wanted to game, you would run out and you would buy a you know, secondhand 7700K and overclock the snot out of it. Oh right, thermals! We're not done yet. So we already have a pretty good idea of what we're going to see here simply because the power consumption on Intel's platform was so much lower. Yeah, so this is consistent with what we saw before with Intel's cores coming in about five degrees lower. So there you have it, guys. I said it before, but it bears repeating. Take everything you saw here with a grain of salt because we don't know what, if anything, Intel will change about the real product that they're supposedly coming out with. I mean, something like an increase to the all-core boost frequencies could make a significant difference to the results that we got today. But what it looks like for now is that for the first time in over a decade, in a pure who's got the biggest willy competition, because I don't know that we would necessarily put a two thumbs up recommendation behind either of these, depending on pricing, AMD might have the bigger willy. Who to thunk it? And this Willy measuring contest was brought to you, of course, by Videoblocks. Videoblocks is the place to get studio quality footage for a fraction of the cost, and we use it all the time, particularly on our Tech Quickie channel. With Videoblocks, you can download all the stock video your heart desires from their member library, including HD and 4K footage, After Effects templates, motion backgrounds, and more. Plus, you can get exclusive discounts on millions of additional marketplace clips where you save 40% on every purchase compared to non-members, and the original artists take home a commission of the sale price. All the content is royalty free, so you can use it for commercial and personal projects such as YouTube videos, and new clips get added regularly, so there's always something new to check out. So head to the link in the video description to learn more. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, then clearly you're not into like, you know, heavyweight title fights, because that's basically what we saw today. But if you did like it, hit that like button, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured <laughs> at the link in the video description. Just like, you know, you, you like, you open up your wallet, you start, you know, pulling out the cash and then the credit cards. You, just, you know what? Forget it. Just, just, just take the whole thing, right? Um, so uh, what else was I going to say? Right, our merch store. You can check that out at the link in the video description. Also, we have our community forum down there, which you should totally join.